Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin today's ceremony in a few minutes. Please take this moment to silent your cell phones and take your seats. Thank you. I can have your attention one second. I have one housekeeping item uh, to, to cover here. We are experiencing an unusual hot spell, even more so in South Louisiana than we do normally. Uh, your health and your safety is our number one priority here at Bollinger Shipyards. So each of you should have received either a, a bottle of water, a fan, uh, but if you start feeling affected by the elements and the heat, I ask you please raise your program and, and someone can be here to assist you uh, to either deliver water. We also have a medical staff here as well. So you're not interrupting the ceremony. Your health and safety is very important. So please keep, keep, keep us in, in check here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the christening of the United States Naval Ship Navajo. The first ship, absolutely, what the, <laughs> we're here. This is the first ship, the Navajo class of the towing, salvage, and rescue ships. I am Jeffrey Green. I'm the Executive Vice President of Government and External Affairs here at Bollinger Shipyards. On behalf of the 3,500 men and women of Bollinger Shipyards, it is my very great honor to welcome you all here who are both joining us in person and also on live stream. Will the guests please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the honors, the presentation of colors, the national anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the invocation. Commander Kyle Miller, United States Navy, officer in charge, supervisor of shipbuilding Gulf Coast Detachment, Louisiana. 
Mr. John Lighthammer, Program Manager, Auxiliary and Special Mission Shipbuilding Program. Captain Troy Brumer, United States Merchant Marine, Prospective Master, USNS Navajo. Miss Maya Upshaw and Miss Naomi Upshaw, Maids of Honor. Mr. Eric Bollinger, Vice President of Sales, Bollinger Shipyards. Mr. Thomas Rivers, Acting Program Executive Office, Ships. Rear Admiral Jeffrey Spivey, Deputy Commander, Military Sealift Command. Brigadier General Douglas Clark, United States Marine Corps, Commanding General, 4th Marine Division. Mr. Justin Ahastein, Executive Director, Navajo Nation, Washington Office. He's representing the Honorable Boo Nigren, President of the Navajo Nation. Vice, Vice Admiral Craig Clapperton, United States Navy, Commander, Fleet Cyber Command, and Commander, 10th Fleet. Our principal speaker, the Honorable Orlando Teller, Assistant Secretary for Tribal Affairs, U.S. Department of Transportation. The Honorable Meredith Berger, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Energy Installations and Environment. And now our ship sponsor, Ms. Jocelyn Deli, escorted today by Mr. Ben Bordelon, President and CEO of Bollinger Shipyards. Ladies and gentlemen, the Navy Band Southeast will now render honors to our senior official, the Honorable Meredith Berger. Advance the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.
Pledge of Allegiance will be delivered by Mr. Eric Bollinger. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Color Guard, retire the colors. Lieutenant Wendt will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Creative of all, <clears throat> we come to you this morning to invoke your presence at the christening of TATS 6 the USNS Navajo. Lord, as we mark this milestone in her life, we give you thanks for the men and women who have labored to bring her into fruition. I give you thanks for the knowledge, wisdom, insight, and leadership that has come together to shape this machine into what she is now and will be in the future. Lord, this ship will provide towing, salvage, rescue, I pray that she will always be ready to serve this country and her allies. I pray that, as she, that she will carry the spirit of her namesake, the Navajo Nation, in support and defense of this land. I pray that this ship and her naming will be one more step in the healing and reconciliation of the United States and her ind indigenous people. Lord, I pray for all who are in attendance today that you will bless, your blessing will be upon us. To you I pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Went. Will the guests please be seated? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for the, Navy, the Naval Construction Battalion 11 Color Guard and the Navy Band Southeast for joining us today. I would like to begin by recognizing a very special guest in the audience today. Corporal Peter McDonald, Marine Corps World War II veteran, member of the original Navajo Code Talkers, and former chairman of the Navajo Nation. Sir, thank you so much for being here. It is an honor. Today we are also joined by many members of the Navajo Nation who have traveled a great distance to be with us today. From the Navajo Nation Council of Delegates, the Honorable Shauna Ann Claw, the Honorable Andy Nez, the, the Honorable Danny Simpson, former Speaker of the Navajo Nation, the Honorable Lorenzo Bates, the Honorable Lashana So, Deputy Cabinet Secretary of the New Mexico Indian Affairs Department. From the, from the Navajo Nation Veterans Advisory Council, Bobby Ann Baldwin, Linda One Salt, Raymond Smith Jr., Katrina Yazzie, Gabriella Mel, Miss Navajo Nation 2023, Miss Valentina Klitzo. Would all members of the Navajo Nation stand if you are able? Thank you. 
Please join me in welcoming some special guests also in the audience today. Ms. Laura Ann Chasson, Principal Chief of United Homa Nation. <laughs> Mr. Marshall Pierre Wright, Chairman of the Tunica Biloxi Tribe of Louisiana. Ms. Ann Zumwalt, sponsor of USS Zumwalt, representing the Society of Ship Sponsors. Our state, regional, and local elected officials and community leaders and their representatives, please be recognized. Thank you. Our partners and customers from the Navy's PMS 325 program office and the supervisor of shipbuilding Gulf Coast. Our teammates at the Military Sea Lift Command and all of the civilian mariners, both current and future, who will own and operate this vessel. And finally, please help me welcome our Bollinger shipbuilders in the audience today. Their strength and commitment to excellence lives in each and every Bollinger built vessel. It is now my pleasure to introduce our chairman and CEO and host of today's ceremony, Mr. Ben Bordelon, President, Chief Executive Officer Bollinger. How we doing? Nice and cool today. What a, what a great day to be in South Louisiana. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed officers, honored guests, and members of the South Louisiana, South Louisiana community, welcome. Uh, we, we're certainly glad to have you here today. It is with great pride that I welcome you all to the Bollinger Homa uh, christening of the USNS Navajo. Uh, great day, uh, great backdrop behind us. Um, it's it's going to be a wonderful event for, for many folks. Um, this isn't just this isn't just any ship. Um, it's the first of its kind. Uh, so this is the first of class vessels. Um, we're going to be building five of these, uh, but there's, there's no other than number one besides this one. So we're excited to, to be here today. Um, this is a Bollinger-built Navajo-class towing, salvage, and rescue ship manufactured to the highest level of craftsmanship and quality of the brave men and women and we're building for the United States Navy, um, who day in and day out serve to defend our great nation of ours. Without doubt, they always do. And today we honor and recognize the profound sacrifices and commitment of the Navajo Nation to our country. I was talking to my son earlier, um, my daughters in the audience and, and the LSU fans, and they were talking about Go Tigers. I'm like, well, today might be Go Navajo Day. So we're excited about, we're excited about doing that. Um, and with that, I'll be remiss. I'll get in trouble. Um, I have my wife sitting out front, Jimmy. Um, thanks for being here and on time. Awesome. And my daughter, uh, Brooke, she's here as well. So um, not check those good boxes. I'm in good shape. But this ship um, really is it's, it's a first of class, as I mentioned. And it's a class that will bear the name and spirit of the Navajo people. For over two centuries, the Navajo people have shown an unwavering commitment to the defense and protection of the United States. Um, here up front, we have a, literally a, a hero that's... that's um, you know, in my mind, it is, is what America's all about. Um, and the things that the Navajo Nation has done for our, our country for many years um, is being acknowledged here today. This is, this perhaps best exemplifies um, in the Second World War, as mentioned, with the Navajo code talkers used their native language to develop an unbreakable code. And this played a pivotal, pivotal role in securing an allied victory for us. Their warrior spirit, deeply embedded in their culture and traditions, has enriched our military and fabric of our entire nation. And it is that spirit that would carry this ship forward and inspire its crew. This vessel stands as a symbol of innovation, dedication, commitment, sacrifice, and perseverance. Every weld, every beam, every system on this ship was crafted with the thought of the warriors that inspired the name and extraordinary sailors who will navigate her through calm and storm alike. Our vision has always been clear, very clear, to lead the shipbuilding industry by upholding unmatched standards of 
quality, safety, and craftsmanship. And this is an example of, what, of that exact mission for us. And this is not just any standard. We call it the Bollinger Standard. Uh, we, we came here roughly two years ago and we bought this shipyard in the, in the middle of a contract. Um, we bought it in, in April. Um, and a few months later, we had a storm hit us here um, that affected many folks in our shipyard and the community and, and in the Navy and, uh, and really all around us. And a lot of the blood, sweat, and tears into this ship is a reflection of the hard work and dedication of our workforce and community. This lead ship is designed and built to the standards so that sailors can operate with confidence every day, even in the harshest environments. And it's an honor beyond words for Bollinger Shipyards to partner with the Navy to continue its legacy. The trust bestowed upon us to construct a new class of vessels is both a responsibility and really a privilege that we all hold dearly. We look at it as, a, as an absolute privilege to, to come out here every day and build ships for our, for our government that are gonna put possibly our sailors in harm's way to protect, excuse me, protect this great nation. On that note, let me take a moment to acknowledge our team of skilled men and women that have worked tirelessly on the USNS Navajo. Your expertise, dedication brought the USNS Navajo to life. And to our South Louisiana community, our partners, our suppliers, our vendors, all of you uh, play a key part in this, this accomplishment that we're celebrating today. And with your partnership and unwavering support and faith, we would not be here today without question. I'd be remiss to talk about it. It's not on a speech um, that's, that's gonna be coming for others, but you know, um, y'all gonna get a chance to, to meet uh, Ms. Jocelyn, um, who is, is really gonna be in my mind the mother of the ship and she's gonna have her spirit and soul in it with, with the whole Navajo family. Um, she's awesome, y'all gonna love it. I got this cool little um, toad on my shoulder, this horned toad um, that's gonna protect me. I had my Bollinger deal, I said, no, I think this is a, an upgrade for sure. Um, but having that type of commitment um, and faith and, and really follow through of, of who the Navajo people are um, encompassing that into the, this vessel um, is going to live with the ship forever. It is no more appropriate person uh, than Miss Jocelyn and her family. Um, one other thing I'm just going to, this is a kind of a one-off. It is hot today. Um, and I mentioned um, I, have, I have boys. I have my daughter here, but two boys. Uh, they both have big heads like me, literally, because they're football players. We don't wear hats well. Um, so my daughter found a website that has big hats. And, and I, got, I got a hat and I my first hat I have is I put a tatch vessel on it. So uh, this is one I'm going to wear with pride um, and, and very thankful to be here today. So with that, Ms. Jocelyn and Maya Naomi, um, I have some flowers for you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Ben. It is now my pleasure to introduce Rear Admiral Jeffrey Spivey, Deputy Commander, Military Sea Lift Command. Well, good morning. It, it is a great honor on behalf of Military Sea Lift Command to be here and to be present and to witness and of this beautiful ship and to be the guest of Bollinger. Secretary Berger, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for being here, ma'am. Secretary Miller, welcome. Vice Admiral Clapperton, thank you, sir. Representing CNO, Mr. Justin, great getting to know you last night and uh, talking with you more about the Navajo Nation. The ship sponsor, Then uh, that was a beautiful addition and, and such a testament to the grace and elegance of the speech from Ms. Uh, Ms. Jocelyn Viley last night. Thank you so much. You'll be a great welcome at MSC to tour, to go to, to meet the crew of your ship anytime, any place that we can get you there or bring her in. So thank you. Thank you. And also our maids of honor, Ms. Maya. And Miss Naomi, it's a privilege to have you up on the stage, and we look forward to your speeches later. Sir, on behalf of your 
what a brilliant partner, what a uh, gracious host, and a great opportunity to enjoy the conference and the celebration last night. Thank you. To the Navajo people, I'm uh, impressed, overwhelmed, and encouraged, and I'm so glad that this class of ship bears the Navajo name. Great tradition, great history, which I will talk about in just one moment. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm honored to represent the men and women of Military Sealift Command, about 8,000 persons worldwide, ships all over the world doing key missions for the Navy. Don't quite make it on television as much as the destroyers and aircraft carriers, but without the Military Sealift Command, without ships like this, it doesn't happen. I'll tell you about that in a moment. The TATS-6 combines two classes of ships for your nation and your Navy. It combines those into one class of ship that's more capable than any ship that we have out there in this salvage class. And I'm looking forward to talking about that. So let me tell you the name of the Navajo. The Navajo is no stranger to the Navy. There have been five ships named after the Navajo Nation. First Navajo came into service in 1908, served from 1908 to 1937, and then as a private vessel in Hawaii from 42 to 46 after the attack during World War II. The Navajo III, 1970 to 1919. The Navajo AT664, 1940 to 1943. The Navajo ATR-138, from 1945 to 1962. Up into present day, the Navajo class from 1980, excuse me, the, the Navajo ship from 1980 to 2016. As we commission this ship, I imagine that she will continue service for 30 more years. A great testimony to the commitment of the U.S. Navy, Military Seal of Command, and we're proud to bear, for her to bear the Navajo name. This christening ceremony is special to me because I learned last night from this Navajo Nation that about 22% of the Navajo peoples have served or are serving or have served in the in military service throughout history. That's a tremendous number. This christening ceremony is a public display uh, to tell the world that the ship has come to life. And so it's fitting that we're here to represent the Navajo Nation and, re and recognize the motto, the vessel of the protector of life. That's on the crest, very important. The vessel of the protector of life. Let me give you two examples of how important these ships are to the Navy and the nation. And uh, just two years ago, uh, there have been two, three, and many more incidents uh, opportunities for ships like this to do a great work. We recovered downed aircraft on the bottom of the ocean in the Mediterranean. We recovered downed aircraft on the bottom of the ocean in the South China Sea. We, we re recovered key uh, cargo dropped into the ocean and pulled that back up to the service to salvage, to preserve our interests. That's part of what these ships do on the salvage. It's just capable to empower and enable our submarine fleet. I can't tell you the importance of our submarine fleet in our current day. There's no more powerful entity we must keep afloat. This ship is powerful enough to tow an aircraft carrier, the newest one, the Ford. Very important for our Navy. This is an enabling vessel, it's an enabling class, and it's going to be followed by five more ships, four more ships. The Cherokee Nation, the Saginaw, Ojibwe, the Shinnebeck, the Lenny Lampade, and the Muskogee Creek, all built by Bollinger. We're so grateful for that. We can't do this without our partners, and our partners start with Bollinger, and they're empowered by our PEO ships at Naval Systems Command and all the shipyards here in Homa. So I thank you to them on behalf of Military Sea Lift Command, and I thank you to all the work again. So, Ms. Billy, this is a great privilege today. It's a great privilege on behalf of Military Sea Lift Command. We look forward to you working with our crew, being part family and making part of the Navajo Nation part of the MSC commitment. Thank you. A lot about ships, a lot about people. 
But without this, our civilian mariners will make up the crew of this ship. Um, Captain Troy Bomber, thank you. And you look forward that you are a prospective CO, uh, prospective master, but you're inbound. We have 5,700 requirements for civil mariners at Military Seal of Command and, and mates, engineers, bosun's mates, and able seamen who work in machinists around the world. So that's what your Navy at Military Seal of Command is doing on a daily basis. This class of ship will be an integral part of it. We truly look forward to operating this ship and to serving you and to serving our Navy and to serving the nation. May God bless, God bless the U.S. NS Navajo, all who built her, and the Navajo Nation. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rear Admiral Spivey. Our next speaker is Vice Admiral Craig Clapperton, Commander, Fleet Cyber Command, and Commander, 10th Fleet. Great Navy Day. Good morning, everybody. Uh, what a tremendous opportunity. It's always a, a special day in the Navy when we have events like this. Uh, but really, the creation of our newest ship uh, in our newest class uh, with such a proud name. Uh, what, an, what an amazing opportunity. And on behalf of Admiral Lisa Franchetti, I am, I am deeply honored uh, to be here today. So uh, thank you all for being here, and thank you uh, for joining us. Honored members of the Navajo Nation, Bollinger Shipyard executives, shipbuilders, partners from the defense industry, fellow mariners, and distinguished guests. Again, it's my privilege to be here. Secretary Teller, Secretary Berger, Mr. Bordelin, thank you all for, for honoring us with your presence. And of course, uh, Ms. Jocelyn, wonderful to see you again. And again, thank you for last night. Just uh, really a moving uh, experience. So wonderful to have you as, as the sponsor of this tremendous ship. It's also wonderful to be here in the South, uh, in the Gulf Coast, in the Southeast, an area with a great seagoing tradition, uh, an area with a, a great tradition with the United States Navy. So, uh, a special opportunity to do that. Thank you to Bollinger Shipyards for hosting this ceremony and being an enduring partner by delivering capable ships to protect and defend our nation. Your team has worked diligently to construct the newest of our towing, salvage, and rescue ships to ensure sailors and mariners receive critical, timely support, and stay forward around the globe, defending our interests. And they will sail wherever international law allows, sail and operate right to the edge of controversy to ensure a free global commons for all. These multi-purpose ships also stand ready to respond quickly in the event a disaster strikes, providing critical humanitarian assistance, firefighting support, and spill response a special capability that few ships, whether in the MSC or in the Navy, can provide. Among today's many distinguished guests, I want to offer a special welcome, of course, uh, to Ms. Jocelyn and also uh, to her daughters, Maya and Naomi. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Um, you know, being a sponsor is, uh, is, is, a, is a huge opportunity, but also a huge responsibility. You and the original, the first crew, the plank-owning crew, as we say in the Navy of this ship, will really help to, uh, to breathe life into the ship and set its heritage uh, and, and, and how its culture is developed. And I, again, I can think of no better name and no better person uh, to carry that forward. Uh, Troy, with you and with Kyle, uh, as, as your mariners and your sailors uh, breathe life into this great ship. I also send a, extend a special thanks to the Diné for letting America's Navy share in your community's unshakable unshakable legacy of service with naming and sailing a ship in its honor. I also want to extend my personal thanks and appreciation and, and really my honor uh, to Corporal Peter McDonald. Uh, he joins us here today in person and uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, as, my, as I understand it, uh, Mr. John Kinsel uh, and Mr. Thomas Begay, two other Navajo Code Talkers, uh, joining us online today. So gentlemen, uh, an honor uh, to be here with, with all of you. It's uh, an amazing uh, set of heroes. Round of applause, please. Have fun.
As those of us uh, gathered here today know very well, a ship's name is very important. They carry great significance and display to the world the people, ideas, and places that we value as a nation. And Navajo is an exceptional example of that value. The Navy has in fact named 10 ships after Native American peoples or individuals in service or under construction. And by tradition, a new class of ships carries the name of the ship in that class. So as Admiral Spivey mentioned, those other four ships, while they will have their own individual names, they also will be referred to as Navajo, the Navajo class. So that great tradition, that great heritage will exist not just on this ship, but all five of the class. So truly a special opportunity. These ships have essential roles, as many have said before me. They'll help us to defend forward against and deter aggression, and they'll maintain free and open seas and global commons for all to enjoy. But these roles cannot be executed without our sailors and our mariners, and I'm extremely proud to have those sailors and mariners recommend the more than 15,000 Native American war fighters, sailors, soldiers, Marines, airmen, and guardians that serve in our nation today. They are uh, great heroes. They are men and women of great sacrifice and service. They have incredible technical expertise. They are tactical experts and they serve across all of our services from the deepest of the oceans to the very edges of space. Navajo and other native peoples have consistently served and served with great distinction as Corporal McDonald exemplifies and personifies every day across every, across every branch and throughout our history. So I'm especially humbled, and I think it's, it's, it's very fortuitous, um, because one of my roles as Fleet Cyber uh, and as the 10th Fleet Commander is to be the Navy Cryptologic Officer. And so, like the Code Talkers, of course, the Navajo are the most famous of the Code Talkers, uh, it is our job uh, to protect our communications. Um, now today, we do that with artificial intelligence and high power computing and machine learning. Uh, and higher math, uh, but my men and women that, that perform that service certainly feel really a unique connection uh, to the Navajo Code Talkers that achieve that goal not with high power computing but with innovation, creativity, sharing their heritage and their culture, uh, but ultimately with a great service and great sacrifice. And in fact, in the 5th Marine Division Signal Officer, Major Howard Connor once said that if not for the Navajo, the Marines never would have taken Iwo Jima. And arguably, and arguably we would not have been uh, victorious in World War II. Well, as I said, the technology has changed since then the need for brave men and women remains the same. They maintain, they maintain our forces advantage through selflessness, courage, and integrity. And we are eternally grateful for the service of the Navajo in the past and today, and we strive to emulate their legacy as we move forward, day in and day out. My hope is that this ship is grounded in the values of tradition, resiliency, and honor, and that we will honor the service and recognize the service of the Navajo and the other Native American families and the communities throughout this new class, the sight of which will reassure those around the globe that we are a trusted partner and that we will stand shoulder to shoulder with our allies and partners. The ship will join a Navy that upholds the international rules-based order in all bodies of water around the globe and around the clock. It will embody our commitment to being good stewards of peaceful global commons and prepared to respond wherever and whenever called upon. I have no doubt Navajo and her crew will stand ready for their mission and for the crew and of course to our sponsor, I thank you for your service, for laying down the foundation of our nation's future by being plank owners in USNS Navajo and helping to establish her life as you breathe life into this crew and take her to sea. And again, on behalf of Admiral Lisa Franchetti, I wish the Navajo people and especially the crew of the Navajo fair winds and falling seas. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Admiral Clapperton. It is now my pleasure to, in to introduce Justin Ahostein, representing the Navajo Nation President, Boo Nigren.
Yat a bene. She a Justin a Hastinian she. Adona and Schlinigi a Belagana and Schlin. Tots and Abel Sistine Belagana a dasha che. Nanak is Ani a dasha nulli. About okay the dead nasha. My name is Justin Ahastin. I'm the executive director of the Navajo Nation Washington office here representing the Honorable Boo Van Nigren, president of the Navajo Nation. I am pleased to be joined here by many of our Navajo leaders, ranging from our past and current council delegates, our family members within the federal government, as well as the state government, and our community leaders. We are blessed to have such a powerful advocate here today to share in these activities. This ceremony signifies more than the unveiling of a new class of towing, salvage, and rescue vessels. It is a homage to the Navajo people's rich military legacy. Navajo warriors throughout history have tirelessly shielded our nation from the legendary Navajo code talkers of World War II to the brave Navajo men and women serving today our nation embodies the spirit of warriors, protectors, and defenders. We are honored to have a few of those brave men and women with us here today as we pay tribute to them for their extraordinary courage, resilience, and dedication to service of this great nation. A heartfelt ahieha goes out to the Honorable Peter McDonald Sr., co-talker, former chairman of the Navajo people, and a visionary who we are all honored to have with us. The Navajo, or Diné, as we're traditionally known by, have a rich cultural heritage marked by a profound connection to the land and a deep respect for nature and a strong commitment to our people. Our story is woven in the fabric of our nation, a testament to our resilience and our unwavering spirit. In the darkest days of World War II, when the freedom of our world hung in the balance, it was the Navajo Code Talkers who stepped forward to serve their country using the Navajo language, a tongue so complex and intricate that it was indecipherable to those who did not grow up speaking it. They devised an unbreakable code, a code that remains unbroken today. Theirs was a contribution that turned to the tide of war, a triumph that saved countless lives and a sacrifice that we remember with deep gratitude. Yet the service of the Navajo people did not stop there. Many Navajo served bravely in the Vietnam War, the Korean War, and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, proving time and time again that their courage and commitment to the defense of our nation. Many made the ultimate sacrifice, their names etched in our hearts, and their stories a testament to their valor. The Navajo people have also served our nation in ways less known, but no less significant. In the treacherous mines of the Colorado Plateau, the Navajo uranium miners labored under dangerous conditions, contributing to the advancements of our nation's nuclear agenda, supporting national defense activities, including the Manhattan Project. Their sacrifice, often at a great personal cost, helped to shape the world as we know today. In honoring the Navajo veterans and people, we must also recognize the culture that shaped these warriors. The Navajo believe in Hojon, a philosophy that encourages the pursuit of balance and harmony. This philosophy is reflected in their stories of changing woman who embodies resilience and transformation and monster slayer who symbolizes protection and bravery. These are the values that the Navajo people carry with them into every arena, including their service to our nation. In the spirit of our ancestors and guided by our traditions, the Navajo people have shown an unparalleled commitment to service, a commitment that we continue to honor. As we stand here today, let us remember those sacrifices made by our Navajo veterans and our people. Let us remember their courage their determination and their resilience. May we strive to live up to the example set by our people to seek the balance within our lives, to be brave in the face of adversity, and to honor the sacrifices of those who came before us. We owe that to our Navajo veterans, and we owe that to our Navajo people, our deepest respect and our sincerest gratitude. Today and always, 
we will honor them. In maritime tradition, a ship's christening is a grand debut into the vastness of the world's oceans. This ritual bestows blessings upon the vessel, ensuring safe voyages for all aboard. Today we embrace this tradition, harmonizing it with the Navajo's unique cultural heritage and spirituality. We bless this vessel, the USNS Navajo, instilling in it our people's resilience, wisdom, and courage. As a Marine Corps veteran myself, I am filled with gratitude and pride knowing that our legacy of service continues to be celebrated. The USNS Navajo encapsulates the spirit of our warriors and the tenacity of our people. It will carry out our heritage, values, and traditions across the seas, reinforcing our enduring commitment to protect and defend. To my fellow Navajo veterans, I extend my deepest appreciation for your service. Your courage and resilience have shaped the future and etched an indemnable mark on our nation's history. And as we christen today's ship, we honor your commitment and reaffirm our steadfast support to all of our veterans. Additionally, the christening of the U.S. and its Navajo is more than just an event. It symbolizes a profound bond between the Navajo Nation and the United States Navy. This moment epitomizes pride, unity, and a shared commitment to protect our nation's interests. President Nygren has asked me to express his personal sincerest appreciations to our leaders for their unwavering dedication and tireless efforts that have been instrumental into making this day a reality. This includes former Speaker of the Navajo Nation Council, Lorenzo Bates, Deputy Cabinet Secretary of Indian Affairs for the State of New Mexico, Ms. Lashana So, the Honorable Council Delegate Seth Damon, the Honorable Council Delegate Carl Slater, the late Senator John McCain, and of course, our wonderful sponsor here with us today for the USN Navajo, Jocelyn Billy Upshaw. Your commitment to honoring the Navajo Nation has been inspiring, and we are grateful for your steadfast support. May the USNS Navajo traverse the seas with unwavering strength, carrying the legacy of our warriors and the aspirations of our people. Let it stand as a testament to the Navajo Nation's enduring contributions to military service and a beacon of hope for future generations to come. Thank you, and may the blessings of our ancestors guide and protect the USNS Navajo on its noble journey. Semper Fidelis and Akehat. Thank you, Justin. And now it is my honor to introduce the Honorable Meredith Berger, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Energy, Installations, and Environment. Thank you. There we go. Not as tall as I usually tall. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy, who is so sorry that he couldn't be with us today, I echo the pride and the recognition of all of the hard work from the shipyard to the dedication of the Navajo Nation that has been recognized by my colleagues here and partners on the stage today. Um, and to the volunteer shipyard team, thank you for all that you do to bring this capability to the day. Uh, Honored guests, friends, and notably to the members of the Navajo Nation, both here and joining remotely, and especially to Ms. John Billy, a most fitting ship sponsor. How special it is to share this day with all of you as we christen the best in the Navajo, new Navajo salvage and rescue ship, the USNS Navajo. Make no mistake, as Admiral Clapperton said, a ship's name is quite significant. The Navy names ships after people, ideas, and places that are special and that we want to honor. Today, we recognize the strength and resilience of the Navajo Nation and its contributions to national defense. We pay respect to our collective heritage and make a commitment to our collective future. There are many reasons that we are proud to connect Navajo through this naming 
in an enduring way that recognizes the enduring commitment to both our past and our future. Now, in World War II, the Navajo Code Talkers the nation, deploying with the Marines and using their language to transmit thousands of messages by telephone and radio. And as others have noted, the enemy never broke a single message. And these acts of valor were decisive in the United States victory. Today, we're honored with the presence of Robert McDonald Sr., United States Marine Corps. Sir, to you and all the Navajo Code Talkers and those watching remotely, thank you for your service to our country. The continued service has made an imprint on our Navy, on our Marine Corps, and on our nation. Now, service is an enduring thing, as, as Justin talked about. I appreciated that very much. And service comes in times of conflict and in times of peace. And top of my mind is our shared future. I'm heartened when I see young leaders like our maids of honor, Maya, Naomi, and Valentina. It makes even stronger the commitment to the department, that the work that the Department of the Navy does that ensures responsible stewardship of lands, protecting natural and cultural resources, preserving historical and cultural artifacts, and making sure that we take care of one another and the things that we treasure. We do this so that we stay in balance, so that we keep our ecosystem, our equilibrium. We protect the elements that are our foundation and we ensure our collective mission and story can carry forward. And so we take another step towards creating a personal and enduring relationship with the Navajo for those who fail this vessel. From the colors of the crest, the watchful eye and safeguard of the horned toad, the future USNS Navajo will be well prepared to be, as the motto says, and significantly, in the language of the Diné, the vessel of the protectors of life. And those who sail this vessel will have the enduring support and partnership of an incredible sponsor in Ms. Jocelyn B. It's said that the character and the spirit of the ship's sponsor serves to enrich, guide, and protect the ship and her crew. Ms. Billy, your passion is palpable, and your heart and your spirit are strong. You're generous with your knowledge, your love, guidance, and faith, and you readily accept those offerings in return. You know what it means to be a protector of life. Your innate ability to care for and bring strength to others will set the foundation and the ethos for this vessel. Your drive and determination will set the example for those who sail the USNS Navajo. How fortunate the future USNS Navajo will be to benefit from a strong woman with tremendous character as their sponsor and how fortunate we are to be able to learn from your perspective and commitment. Now, it's a truly special thing when we come together to christen a ship to mark this important milestone. For those who aren't familiar, there's a life cycle to a ship, and there are four key milestones in a ship's life. First comes the keeling, it's the effective birth of the ship. Uh, the full frame of the vessel takes place, um, excuse me, takes shape from stem to stern. And next comes the christening, which we'll celebrate today. Uh, most recognized for its hallmark breaking of a bottle of champagne on the bow, bringing good luck and safety for the ship and her crew. And then comes the commissioning, where the ship will finally join the fleet. And after a long, productive life of service, the ship will have a decommissioning. With the keel leading, you started a unique lifelong relationship with the ship and her crew. And you'll continue to keep in touch with each commanding officer. And you're included as a plank owner, an honorary member 
of the first crew of protectors of life. I do hope you cherish this day and the relationships that you'll build with the ship and the crew. Now we'll ask a lot of those who will fulfill the nation's missions when they sail aboard the future USNS Navajo. In times of conflict and in times of peace around the world, around the clock, our Navy and Marine Corps are present. They're forward deployed. And they'll be counting on the future USNS Navajo and all of the vessels in the Navajo class. Now, Ms. Billy, as you break the champagne bottle on the bow and announce I christen the, the USNS Navajo, you'll take the prospective crew one step closer to joining the fleet. And this is a fleet that is committed to protecting our way of life, advancing global security, and safeguarding the things that we hold dear. Now, a be alert. What a meaningful day this is for you and the crew, and I'm so glad to share it with you. Thank you. Okay. Is this working? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Secretary Berger. And now it is my, it is now my honor to introduce the Honorable Orlando Teller, Assistant Secretary for Tribal Affairs, U.S. Department of Transportation, and our principal speaker for today's ceremony. Ooh, it's warm up here. I tell you. Yat e anotsko do halane she ya Orlando Teller dashijne. Nasht eja dene tachi in slon to head leaning bushes teen. Todichini dash a che do she hint dash another echo out the nensle. Shma e clara tanan hol yandan e istash lanadan na gondan. Shija e Anderson Teller hol yande e anashashia teen. Say it ni dan na gondan. Do banash nishiki e President Biden do Secretary Buttigieg e banash nish. Good morning, everyone. My name is Orlando Teller. I introduce myself formally in Navajo, identifying my four clans. My mother's clan is Zuni people adopted into the Red Street Forehead clan. My father's clan is a, a Water Flows Together clan. My mother's grandfathers are of the Bitter Water people. And my father's grandfathers are of the Salt people. And the reason why I formally introduce myself uh, is to not only identify who I am, but also reach out to those that are in the crowd and that are watching that are my relatives. The Navajo kinship is a predominant uh, philosophy and its practice throughout our lives. It would be... Um, disrespectful to my mother and to my family if I don't identify myself to, to new people. It is an honor for this invite that I received and to share with you that I don't only represent myself, I represent um, my late grandfather who also was a co-talker, uh, Mr. Edward Ta, also my community in Chinle, Arizona, say it, but also the Navajo Nation, but most importantly, Indian Country. And as the Assistant Secretary for Tribal Affairs, this opportunity that we're celebrating today, and many more like today, in which we honor Indigenous communities, and being uh, on the uh, the Indigenous lands of Homa. Chairwoman Lorian, Chairman Marshall, I sincerely appreciate your hospitality here at your home. You're welcome to come back to Chinle with me anytime you want. Uh, and so it's an honest and meaningful opportunity to stand here before you as your Assistant Secretary for Tribal Affairs and recognizing the tremendous effort 
late nights, long days, that this partnership between the Navajo Nation leadership, the U.S. Army, Bollinger, and everyone in between, and when I mean everyone in between, we're talking about the labor workers, the maintenance men, the janitors, the construction engineers, the project managers, those unhung, uh, unsung heroes that have worked steadfast for Miss Navajo to sit behind us. And this ship marks, as we've heard, the tribute to the sacrifices that Native Americans throughout Indian country, throughout this great union, have sacrificed, especially our co-talkers. The Native Americans have served in armed forces more than any other ethnicity, ethnicity in, uh, in this nation. And this day recognizes uh, that opportunity and that effort. The naming of this ship and its christening is a validation and recognition of our valor, of our efforts to work together and fight together. In fact, naming the ship Navajo and listening to uh, my colleagues and folks on the dais, if you don't know a Navajo woman, my goodness, she will take care of you. She will protect you. She will fight for you, but also she will uh, be very strict in her policies and her ways as any Navajo woman are back home. Right, ladies? See? <laughs> ladies, and, I, and I appreciate that. And when we do go out and when there is activity, I know USNS Navajo will protect her, her, her children that are serving and, and, and maintaining her. Additionally, I am happy to see the integration of our traditions and cultures. I really am in this, in this whole opportunity. The crest, the colors, the names. Uh, we put a little bit of Navajo in everything of this ship, including the blessing ceremony yesterday and the protection songs that we're going to receive this afternoon. And these are wholehearted, sincere prayers that we share not only for the ship and the operation of the ship, but also for us. We're gonna go home with protection. We're gonna go home with blessings. And the corn pollen will follow us back so that we prosper as well. I'd like to express my gratitude to uh, our veterans. Ch uh, Chairman Shiche, Hiahet Nana Diet, Bachahansen, Hiahet and Sago, and all the veterans also that are serving, Bobby Ann and your, your team, Hiahet Nana, though the veterans and also those that are currently serving, Hiahet Diet Bachahansen, the service that you're doing and sacrificing uh, your time away from family. Sincerely appreciate it from my heart. Once again, I'd like to also share my gratitude to Speaker Bates, my little sister Lashana So, Carl Slater, and also the sponsor, Shadeja Shane, Jocelyn Billy Upshaw, for making this day a reality and making this opportunity a tangible opportunity that we see our ship out in the oceans beyond, and making the reality that our holy ones protect the U.S. The holy ones protect the U.S. and its Navajo on its voyage. Thank you, Secretary Teller. And now it is my honor to introduce our ship sponsor, Ms. Jocelyn Billy. A, for, a former Miss Navajo Nation, Jocelyn has been an extraordinary ambassador 
of the Navajo Nation and has fought tirelessly to support veterans and service members within the Navajo Nation and across the country. Jocelyn, thank you so much for being here today. Oh. Uh, yeah. Good day, honorable guests. I am moved. Leadership. Our veterans who are here with us today, those from the local area, our local leaders, here in the Southern Louisiana, beautiful day. And most importantly, those lives watching the live stream right now across the Navajo Nation. 12,000 plus registered Navajo veterans. Many, hundreds, maybe thousands that are not recorded. But today, a From, okay, we salute you, the secretary. Okay, does that work now? All right, thank you. So just ranging from the speakers that you heard today, from Secretary Berger, Secretary Orlando Teller, Executive Director here representing the Navajo Nation Advisory Veterans, Veterans Advisory Council, Bobby Ann Baldwin with her delegation as well from the Military Sea Lift Command, from the United States Marines, from the PEO ships, Naval Systems, from Bollinger Shipyards, our hosts here today, from the Naval no Mobile Construction, from Fleet Cyber Command. I can go on and on and on, but today, our veterans, this is for you, for you. We have here representing from peacetime and wartime, even before the great United States was formed, you were defending this land. And because of that, we're still here today. And what an honor to be recognized by the United States government. And I wish that you could feel the power here today, the honor, the fortitude, the reinforcement of all of your sacrifice, your family sacrifice, the prayers, the tears, the longing. May you be refolded into that faith, that hope that has come with us since the beginning of time. What took you through those times is embedded in our heart we're the five-fingered people. Let me tell you a little bit about our Navajo veterans, our namesakes. They strive on what we call and today we are manifesting that. We each are respective of the favorable prayers, songs, and stories that have been said since time immemorial. And through those stories and song, every day that you wake up in the morning, you pray for the best, you hope for the best, not only for yourselves, but for the people around you, your family, your community, your nation, and the world, right? And that's our life philosophy. And every day, peace or not, we're surviving, we're enduring. And we've just been very blessed today. I want to say thank you to the Department of Defense, the entirety of the United States government for recognizing the Navajo veteran, their families and their communities. Because if it weren't for them and the many others, this collaborative uniqueness that we have, we wouldn't be here today. And many fled to this nation 
because of the freedoms we have. But we don't understand and we don't know the sacrifice, even myself as a civilian sponsor. But I look forward to learning more, to telling the stories and sharing the stories, to ensure not only the Navajo veterans, but all veterans heal. That all veterans come to fruition to what they were purposed to be. That today, as we're talking and referencing the champagne bottle, the breaking and bringing this ship to life. For all of our veterans out there that long for that life they had before, before they got injured, before their lives changed, the mothers, the wives, the children, that long for people that never made it home or made it home but never came home home. Today in our language, we say, from right now, we draw this mark. Right now, from this moment forth, no matter what happened in the past, we're going to mark the stay and move forward strong. Because we are a hope, we are a promise that not only have our loved ones prayed for us, but among many veterans and current armed forces members, our Navajo mem veterans made it possible. And Halanet to have here in person one of those here, Shananta, thank you for standing here for our Navajo Code Talkers. And we just had Navajo Code Talker Day, August 14th. And we have in Lagajugay, Arizona, John Kinsel, 106 years old. God bless you, Thal. We also have Thomas Begay of Chin Lee who's also watching. And we remember and uplift them as well. And all the loved ones that have gone on. And we stand in agreement that this day forward, it is a beautiful vessel. I know that some may say, and I've heard it already, why not an aircraft carrier, hint, hint, hint. Why not a submarine, hint, 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 right. But no. What we have to be reminded of is this beautiful combination, TATS-6, USNS Navajo, can take care of an aircraft carrier. It can service a submarine. Again, our Native American people, which was so eloquently shared by here, Justin Ahastin, the very elements that endured that allowed us to see today. We say, He talked about our deities, a son of the changing woman. He talked about our mighty twin warriors that came here into this world that saved us. They went to the ends of the universe to find the tools to honor and to carry us to see the future. But the most important of all is changing woman. And as a matrilineal society, the Navajo people, it made me cry when my brother here, Secretary Orlando Teller shared, we're a matrilineal society. It is right. Don't get loved by a Navajo woman because they will love you through and through. They will cook for you. And that's what our Navajo veterans and those that serve, they are committed. They will endure and sadly some in pain, all because of their love and commitment and dedication. And that's what I hope, that's the least that I owe to our ship. Me and you, Shisalatso, that is our ship, meaning I'm at your support. This week, I've been honored to have the Navy Mobile Construction 
team service. And this is what they said. I have never been treated with so much respect. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. What do you need? Whatever you need. Do I need to pick up something here, ma'am? Let me get that for you. That is what I am to you. Shananda, shisalautso. What do we need to do to heal? What do we need to do to ensure more of a future? What do we need to do to be stronger and greater collective? To ensure our children know the stories, the fortitude, the sacrifice, so we can be stronger together. Because we're going in an unknown time. Our elders said there's going to be a time when the norm became, the unnorm became the norm. And we're headed in that direction. When the first become last and the last become first. It's that time. And the only way for us to survive is to love one another, to have faith, to pray, to heal so that we're our best. So to all my veterans watching from the live stream sites throughout the Navajo Nation, for those watching on the live stream, take on this robe of honor. If you've never felt so honored today, feel it today. You have an amazing, amazing master captain here who served on many of the ships that have the same character. And he is so honored and so proud with his family. And I'm looking to him as a plank, one of the plank owners, to keep this spirit alive, that not only will this great United States of America know your story, but your family, your children, and seven generations ahead. Because it's through story, it's through history, and herstory that things are alive. So with that being said, I just want to say, I'm also uplifting and remembering today the Gold Star Mothers. We have the Navajo Nation honor writers who are going throughout the Navajo Nation today, honoring them. And what this group also does is they, they, they lead and honor our fallen soldiers and our veterans that pass on with honor and dignity. And I uplift them today as they go about remembering not only the Gold Star Mothers, but those who have lost their loved ones. And with its honor also to say, the vessel of the protection of life. I don't know if we know the magnitude of that, but we have a lifetime for everyone to learn. We have a lifetime to remind everyone. So this is just not the first and last day, Secretary Berger, like you, You've said, we will endure with the continued innovation, with the continued service to the warfighter of our ally, to continue to serve, to protect, to inspire, to ensure that there is a safeguard future in union with this, what we call the United States of America. Without taking too much time, let's just take a moment of silence for our veterans that have gone on, not only within the great Navajo Nation because they've served throughout the five different branches and with the newest one, the United States Space Force. I just wanna uplift their spirits of those that are probably here with us, but not in physical form. Those that are shedding tears and memory will go into a moment of silence.
Thank you. And with all that was empowered, that was given to us from the Navajo Nation President, Navajo Nation Vice President, the Navajo Nation Speaker, they weren't able to be with us today because of their commitment to the Navajo people. But I know our leaders here, ranging from the East Coast all the way through the Midlands to the West Coast, up to Alaska and down to the islands of Hawaii. We send a mighty ahihe, ahihe, a mighty thank you for the great honor. And right now I say to our veterans, take it, own it, be well, be blessed. Where there is missing, may it be filled. Where there is lack, may there be resources. Where there's a solution needed, may that come to you and all of us here. That from the mighty eastern shores, the, all the power, the energy, the universe be folded and blessed onto you and all of our armed forces members. From the beautiful south, all the energy and power there be blessed and empowered you. And from the mighty west, may the powers and energy also be well and blessed with you. From the mighty north, may the powers and energy be blessed with you. From Mother Earth, in that way, be restored, be well, and be healed, just as your maker wanted you to be, and continue to serve this mighty country in the ways that you do now. And for those of you that are here today, praying, loving, providing your services, may you be refreshed as well. Because without you, we wouldn't have our military force. So fathers, mothers, grandparents, aunts and uncles, daughters and sons, be refreshed and know that the Navajo Nation honors and appreciates you each as well as citizens of the United States and of the great Navajo Nation. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Billy. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Nelson Billy and Mr. James Billy, Navajo Nation Tribal Elders, to come forward to offer a traditional Navajo protection blessing for the ship.
All right, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to that portion of our program where we have been eager, eagerly awaiting. When our ship sponsor breaks a bottle over the bow of the Tot Six, Christmas her in the name of the Navajo Nation. At this time, Mr. Bordelon will escort Miss Billy, Captain Brumer, Secretary Teller, Secretary Berger to the christening platform. As they're making their way The christening of a ship is a time-honored tradition that goes back thousands of years. The recently constructed vessel is solemnly dedicated, named, and committed to the sea. With the break of the bottle over the ship's bow, the sponsor infuses her spirit and that of the ship's namesake into the new ship. At this time, I'm going to invite all guests to relocate outside of the tent in order to view the christening. As you, do, as you do so, the Navy Band Southeast will now perform God Bless America as we wait for the christening party. You should have seen it. She killed it yesterday, twice. If it was your head, it would have been gone. It would have been gone.
Yes, I am. And on behalf of the Billy family, the maidens, Maya and Naomi Upshaw, with our commitment to step forth and work with our Navajo veterans and all families to ensure that their stories are heard and that we endure into the future. For the United States of America, I christen thee Navajo. May God bless this ship and all who sail in her. So we wanted to absorb into the metal. Though. That's right. Oh, yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of all Bollinger Shipyards, I would like to thank you all for joining us on this truly historic day as we celebrate an important chapter in the life of the USNS Navajo. Thank you very much. <laughs>